All right, so assignment nine, our final assignment that I grade, that's worth three points before your big final project that will be graded through a critique worth 10 points. This is a quick turnover assignment. We work on it today in class. We critique it next class, right? So it's basically just an introduction to this technique called digital painting. And if we look at the past student examples, you'll see that there's a wide range of techniques. I like starting with this one. You want a pretty straightforward subject matter, because if you were taking an intro to painting class, you wouldn't start by painting a historic scene with multiple figures in a landscape, you know, butchering a carcass on the savanna, right? Instead, you would, you would look at pumpkins, or you would look at shoes, or you would look at uh, cylinders and apples and, <laughs> and kind of basic singular objects. So the only limitations for the subject matter of your digital painting is I want you to do either a portrait or an animal. And if you do an animal, I want it to show the animal head to toe. I don't need you to include any kind of background. And if you do a portrait, you can do it from the shoulders up. Right? So animal head to toe, fit the whole thing on there. Head to toe. And the beauty of this is even though when we turn it in, it will just be on a white background, you can always put in a background. You know, the beauty of digital painting is you get to work on it in layers. So just like we composited our creatures into landscapes, you could always composite your digital painting into something else later on. And we'll see how uh, digital painting might really impact your final projects. So the key is we often think of digital painting as being photorealistic. And I have some examples around the room you can see where the portraits are trying very much to look photorealistic. But digital painting can also be very abstracted, very stylized. So this is one of my favorite ones that a student did because it shows a lot of that student's personal like aesthetics and their take on a photo reference. So this is our chance to play, right? And whether you turn it in on a white background or on a gray background doesn't matter to me. As, as long as your layers are set up correctly so you can do more with it later. All right, so on and on and on. So these are digital paintings. What do you need? You need reference. Usually you need multiple references. And you're going to be posting your reference so we know what you're looking at. So even if you stylize it a lot, we want to know the kind of thing you're looking at, right? Even if you don't manage to finish it. Yeah, so you'll see what is the difference between digital painting and, and digital coloring. Digital coloring is always, is always um, behind outline, right? Real or implied outline. So cartoons are digital coloring, right? But you can convert a cartoon or a comic book image, trying to get to one, into a digital painting. And the way you can do that is by making it fully three-dimensional. So this is kind of an example, even though this is more of a 3D rendering. This is not photographic reference, right? This is character design reference. And this is a digital painting that the student made their own digital painting. <laughs> But as long as your digital painting is not based on lines that you're coloring behind, it's not digital coloring, it's digital painting. So you can take Charlie Brown and make a, a realistic digital painting of Charlie Brown. I believe there is one out there. And it looks really freakish. There we go. But it is indeed a digital painting based on a cartoon. Right? So what do we have to worry about with digital painting? We have to worry about the lighting. We have to worry about um, the textures. I don't want to do any of this, but I wanted to show you this. All right. And so the local color that we were doing as flat color in, in digital coloring becomes much more 
layered with many more steps in digital painting. So to help with this, if we go to the class, you log in, go to digital art, you're going to find under links some helpful handouts with digital painting and some helpful handouts in doing portraits and stylized portraits, caricatures, if you will. And because we're nearing the end of the semester, don't be shy about going into Canvas and checking things a lot, right? I've graded all of your, your poster assignments, your presentations. I think we're pretty much up to date. And I'll try to keep it that way. But if you go to links off of the first page, these are your helpful references. So we looked at this a little bit with digital coloring. We did a digital character coloring handout. We also have a digital coloring and painting handout. So go ahead and download that. And then we have this new uh, resource. I'll pass it around. I have it printed here. It's very basic. Or portraiture. That especially if you're kind of intimidated by drawing people and drawing faces, it's, it's more an imaginative template. So the first one, the digital coloring and painting primer, I call it, it's large, it's high resolution, so you can really zoom in and see the difference. But in this gray box, that's digital coloring. And you'll see that the main step there is getting vector line work, that then everything goes behind, even if that line work eventually gets overtaken by color holds and by CMYK separation, it's still digital coloring because it's behind real or implied outline. Whereas digital painting, you won't see outlines in any of these, right? Except as individual strokes that add to the, the stylization. And you can take a photo reference, this is the author James Joyce, and you can decide to make it representational, you know, try to match the photo pretty well, even though I did some pretty impressionistic color here. You can abstract it. You can go so far where it almost doesn't look like a person anymore. It would be fully non-representational if it was just an ar arrangement of shapes and lines and textures. Or you can kind of mix them together, right? Abstract with non-representational with some little elements of realism stuck in. There's a few ways, there's two main ways to go about digital painting based on what you're comfortable with. And this is the way that traditional painters work. A lot of traditional painters, let's say oil painters, will start on a canvas with vine charcoal. We'll use a drawing implement and sketch out their composition, especially if they're doing something like portraiture. And then on top of that vine charcoal, which is very soft and comes off easily, they start putting in their big swaths of colored shapes and softening edges and keeping some hard edges and slowly defining it, right? But these are basically the steps. You can also sketch with just paint. You can call it speed painting or shape painting, but you basically, just put a blob down, you kind of shape it. And with digital paint, that's easier than traditional paint because you can erase, right? And you start with the local flat tones, just like in digital color, but there's no outline under, you know? You're defining your boundaries to all of the edges as you go. And then you build up more and more duotones, highlights and shadows, hard edge, soft edge. You define more and more detail as you go until you have all the tiny little hairs that are even on the kiwi skin and the seeds and the glisten of each one. And that's why digital painting can take a lot of time because it's very easy to get sucked into details. Okay. But I'm gonna to try to help you avoid that through showing how to start with gesture and how to start with kind of guidelines and then work pretty quickly. So the other one, this head design template, just shows you, even if you were just inventing a face, much less looking at one, um, these are kind of the rules of head design. And even if you stylize, like make the eyes huge, there are certain rules you can follow, like there should always be an eye width space between the eyes in order to retain their humanity. Now, you can break these rules. The Simpsons breaks this rule. Garfield breaks this rule. But then you lose a lot of capacity for human emotion, right? And so it's very hard to have someone look believably human with their eyes right next to each other, like two pool balls. And that's when you get things kind of like this, where those proportions aren't really matched, except there is one eye width between the eyes here. But he has so many eyes across 
this no longer looks like a believable human caricature, right? Whereas these digital paintings look much more believable. So what if we put in caricature, and instead of realistic, we put in abstracted? <laughs> you have vast amounts of digital painting styles, right? Where you can retain likeness while still really exaggerating form. So if this is something you're interested in doing, this sheet, Emma Watson here, this sheet will kind of help you understand the rules you need to um, make a believable person. <laughs> And you can see that they're followed here in this sketch. So what are those rules? Basically, the eyes are in the middle of the head. From the top of the skull to the bottom of the jaw, the eyes go in that midline. The eyes are spaced with one eye width between. So if you make the eyes larger, there's, there needs to be a larger space in between. Her eyes, obviously in the photo reference, are believable. They're about five eyes across the face here. But in the sketch, they're made to be a little bit bigger, right? So they widen into this space, but that also requires more widening in between. The nose is basically one third of the distance between the eye line to the chin, and then the lips are the second third, right? That's what this is about. And then the ears fit nicely between the eye line and the nose line, and the hairline is roughly two thirds up from the eye line. So one, two, that's where her hair starts to come out of her head, right? But then obviously with bangs, it comes down and cuts across. So just trying to give you some, some um, foundational basis with which to play. And there are lots and lots of tutorials and fun exercises about caricature. Digital is a great way to caricature because you can actually sketch it and then you can warp your sketch or play with your transformation tools to get something. And I might play with that a little bit. So what do you need to get started? Well, you need reference. You can either do the animal or you can do the portrait. And I'm going to start with a speed painting of a portrait. So I'm going to keep this up in the corner. And I'm going to do Nina Simone. So I need not just one reference of Nina Simone. I can have one main reference, which gives me kind of the pose I'm looking at, but I also want color reference, other angles of her face, types of lighting and texture, because all of that matters for digital painting. Okay, I'm gonna keep that off to the side. Then I'm gonna get my tablet, which we all have now. I'm gonna to go to Photoshop, and I'm gonna create a new file. And that new file I need to make sure is print quality resolution. And because I'm going to be creating all the pixels myself, I only have myself to blame if I create them too small, right? If the resolution isn't high enough. So I'm going to use the same uh, kind of standard I've used throughout the class, 11 by 14 inches. Um, it's going to be a portrait, so I'm going to make it taller than it is wide at 350 pixels per inch. Now what's great about that is that can be printed even at six at um, 16 by 20, and it would still be a good printable resolution. It would still be 240 or higher. This is my blank white space that I have to work with. One method that a lot of people use is they do this. This isn't exactly how I've shown it in past semesters, but I, I'll show it here. It's just quick and quick and easy. Take your reference, just drag it right onto your canvas right? And keep it in the upper corner, somewhere where you don't think you're going to be painting over, and just place it there. Right? So this is now a smart object. I'm going to go ahead and lock it so I don't accidentally paint somewhere else on that layer. And then I have a background, and I have my reference. Now my background, I'm going to rename, just like we did for our, our poster, as blank white canvas and I'm going to lock that because I actually don't want to paint anything on that canvas. That is my clean background. Now on top of my reference image I'm going to do a sketch and I'll call this a speed sketch. And this is how I um, introduce myself to my subject matter, my reference. 
And this is where I use my tablet.